Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I have, well, something different for you today. Behind me, a 2001 Acura Integra GSR. This is the one with the B18C cool VTEC engine in it. Yes, it's got the fat wide valve cover, it says VTEC on it. This car has a common problem, and that is its radiator is leaking. I have done, well, several videos on radiator replacement and radiator replacements on Hondas, and honestly, they're all somewhat similar. So rather than trying to do yet another video similar to what you've already seen, I thought I might try something a little different today and, you know, mix it up for both of us. Well, in this video, what I hope to do is pretty much just record what it would be like to replace this radiator as if I were in a shop. Granted, a shop without a lift, but I have all my tools and everything laid out and ready to go. So what I propose is I'm gonna set up two cameras and they're just gonna stay in that one place. I'm not gonna do any commentary. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna get this radiator out and a new one back in and installed and ready to be bled. I'm not gonna actually go through, you know, bleeding the whole cooling system out and make you watch all that. But we'll come back at the end after the job is complete just to give you an idea of what it would be like for an experienced technician such as myself. I've worked on plenty of Acuras. I can't tell you how many Honda radiators I've replaced. There's been a lot. Although it's been some time since I've just done that without a camera shoved in every place where I'm trying to reach. So the idea in this video, just straight up record the uh, replacement of the radiator. No, nothing other than cuts between two cameras. Either this is gonna work out great or this video will never see the light of day. One of the two things is gonna happen, but you know, hey, this is Eric the Car Guy. We like to try things, don't we? All right, well, at the risk of boring myself and you to death, I decided to do a bit of a voiceover here to uh, help explain some of the things that were going on. Uh, the first thing I want to do is raise the vehicle, then uh, put a drain pan underneath it so that uh, I can drain whatever's left in the radiator. This thing came in bone dry. There was, there was nothing. Nothing in there or barely anything at all. In fact, it, it got so hot that uh, I think she had to pull over and uh, let it cool down before she could go anywhere. So yeah, really kind of sad about that. But I just removed the overflow there, which was empty. I stuck it in my uh, slop sink over there in the corner. And um, I like to start, well, with these, I, I don't like to do too much work underneath if I don't have to. Um, not just because I don't have a lift, but because you, you kind of don't have to. I mean. Most of the stuff on these radiators can come out fairly easily like this. Now, the, the exception would be like when you're doing, say, a, an automatic transmission. When you have an automatic transmission and you've got like cooler lines going to the uh, radiator that you need to deal with in addition to just the radiator hoses themselves, I usually just disconnect those right above the transmission just underneath the upper radiator hose that I just disconnected. Um, and then just remove everything like I'm I'm gonna do here which is w what I'm trying to do uh, I think what what I just did there was open up the uh, drain for the radiator and I'm draining it down into the uh, pan that I put underneath and I think I'm maybe I couldn't reach it I don't remember I actually shot this video some time ago uh, but yeah I'm going underneath there open up the drain put the uh, pan underneath so it catches everything and away you go. It's much easier than like sending radiator coolant everywhere, every, you know, all over the shop floor and stuff. It gets slippery and you could land on your butt. <laughs> now where did I go? Oh yeah, to get my magnetic pan. I love that thing. It's uh, It's really nice to know where your fasteners are and it keeps them from falling out so i've gotten in the habit of using magnetic trays like that when doing jobs just to uh oh well, make it easy to find things make it so that i don't drop them in places that are hard to reach hard to find now i'm doing the uh um electrical connections for the cooling fans um there's also one over here uh, it's not for the cooling fan, it's for something else, so there's a couple. There's there's one that disconnects for the cooling fan itself, and then there's another one that uh, is there for some other purpose, and I can't remember what it was. Um, I, I 
I wish I could. Because I'm, I'm drawing kind of a blank now, because really there's just the, the one large connector for the uh, cooling fan. But then, in addition to that, the harness has a couple of connections that connect or are fastened to the actual fan shroud itself, which uh, you have to remove in order to get the, the radiator out in the way that I'm about to do it. Because if you don't, you're going to have a bunch of wires attached to it. And those aren't very much fun to. Uh, to try and disconnect while you're holding the radiator up in the air. And yes, I just dropped the radiator cap. I think I'm just going to leave it there, though. Yeah, I, th I think I'll leave it there because, you know, it'll be much easier to get to with the radiator out. Or it fell through. I can't remember. Once again, I shot this a while ago. Uh, now, doing the same thing over on the condenser fan here. There is a wire that is attached to the uh, shroud for the uh, power feed to the compressor clutch. Uh, in addition to the uh, actual uh, connector for the fan itself, both of those are, are down here. And just that that attachment for the the compressor clutch, I just unclip that and pop that open so that the the wire is free, and that way I can just uh, get it out of the way and and keep working. I don't I don't try to get the the actual clip out of the fan shroud. I just open the clip up and get the wire out and I can usually do that with a pocket screwdriver and just pry it away yeah and there I'm trying to move it so that it's out of the way so that when I lift the radiator out it doesn't interfere with anything and I think I yeah I had some trouble with this so now I'm just going down there with a pair of pliers usually I can just pop it open with a pocket screwdriver but I think this time I had a little bit of trouble and I'm using those pliers to accomplish the same task looks like we've had success well done Eric uh, now there's just these uh, upper radiator mounts. I try to keep them on the same side. I don't think it really matters because um, I think they're I think they're identical. But I I'd, I'd lay them on top of the engine like that. That way I know that this one goes to this side and that one goes to that side. I usually try to put things back where I found them. My in my mind it's always like the factory had a reason for putting them where they put them. So I, I think it's incumbent upon me to, to try and restore it as close to what the factory made as possible. Now take a look at the radiator here and you can see how these fans are mounted. Um, the condenser fan has those two mounts at the top, those two fasteners there, and down at the bottom there's like a little rubber plug that fits down into a slot. And then there uh, on the cooling fan there's the two fasteners at the top and there's two more at the bottom. Now if this were an automatic there would also be uh, the hoses. Uh, attached to the bottom of the radiator in addition to uh, the cooling fans. In fact, I think one of the mounts for one of those cooling lines, some of them are hard lines, some of them are rubber lines, attached to the same fastener that uh, holds the fan in place. So you may have to deal with that if you have an automatic transmission, but uh, they did not make a, uh, a GSR engine, this B18C engine, with an automatic transmission. Kind of defeats the purpose really because uh, you really want to wind that up into that upper RPM range so you can get that into VTEC so you can get some power out of it. It doesn't have much down at the bottom end, but up at the top it does. Now, as you can see, I just disconnected the um, lower radiator hose by lifting it up out of there rather than doing it while it was in the car. I find this to be much easier. You don't have to deal with the lower splash shield, any of that stuff. It does bend the hose out of shape and that kind of thing. Eh, not a big deal. As far as radiator hoses go, uh, I the bottom hose doesn't get a lot of stress. The bottom hose is the, the cool uh, water going back into the engine, or sh I should say coolant, so it doesn't suffer as much. The upper radiator hose, however, gets all the hot coming out of the engine, uh, so that one goes through a lot of temperature stress. So I would say that that one's more of a concern than the lower hose. So if you wanted to replace hoses, I'd say you really only have to do the upper, but if you want to do them both, hey, knock yourself out. And I just removed the fans to find out, um, while well, I'm going to try to put the fans on the new radiator to find out, hey, guess what? Um, this is not the right radiator. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Everything goes great until you find out you got the wrong radiator. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. I got the wrong part. Well, the fans didn't fit on the new part. I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video, but we're just going to keep rolling and go from here. And we're back, and this time we have the correct radiator. Now, I got lucky. 
uh, was able to find one locally uh, and didn't have to order it because you know I already had the old radiator out it would have sucked to have to put the new one in now it seems like every aftermarket radiator that I run into um, they have provisions for automatic transmissions this one is no exception you can see those uh, lines there down at the bottom that's where the automatic transmission cooler lines would would hook up to uh, the automatic transmission fluid is run through the radiator to help cool it uh, cool transmission fluid makes for a long lasting transmission now what I'm doing here and this is part of the reason I'm doing this commentary is I just put the hose on the the connection to the radiator there on the bottom but I didn't move the clamp yet and the reason I'm doing that is because when you lift it up out of there it twists the hose around and what I found is if I clamp it right away the the hose won't be in the correct orientation so right now what I'm doing is I'm twisting the hose around to make sure that it's in the right location um, and then I'm gonna lift it back up out of there and then install the clamp to hold it in that position if, if you don't do that the lower hose can get twisted and cause a restriction of coolant flow which obviously wouldn't be good but this way I can still have my cake and eat it too in that I'm able to uh, not have to mess with anything underneath like I said but I can still um, you know disconnect the radiator or, or take care of all my connections with uh, without having to go through all that so now I'm gonna put the clamp on for real um, and then finish up the job and when I took that out of there and this is something I probably should have mentioned earlier in the commentary you can see down in the bottom there there's little rubber grommets that fit into uh, little slots in the uh, core support there that's the that's where the radiator has to sit it has to sit in those rubber mounts if it doesn't sit in those mounts properly it won't fit in there um, you may have you may have to struggle with it a little bit so I, I'm spending a little bit of extra time because you're really installing there's there's little plastic pegs on the bottom of the radiator that go through those those grommets down at the bottom you have to hit them just right and you can't see them you sort of have to feel it out which is what I'm doing here but you want to make sure that it's down in there and so that one it's secure and two it doesn't it doesn't get into a bind because if you just drop the radiator in there what can happen is um, you know you miss those mounts and they get rolled over or something like that and it ends up just putting a lot of stress on a part that doesn't need any stress I mean it's got enough heat cycles to go through think about it in the middle of winter it's super cold outside and then it has to get you know up to temperature in the summer it's super hot outside and it tries to maintain temperature and still keep the engine cool so it, get, it gets enough stress from temperature in fact I think that's part of the reason why they fail um, having that aluminum core is great but those plastic tanks the little rubber seal that's between the plastic tank and the uh, the aluminum core is is what normally leaks and I have a feeling that's because of you know the heat cycles that it goes through over and over in its lifetime plus I think that rubber deteriorates coolant over time gets a bit acidic as it gets acidic it starts to eat away at seals things like that nothing lasts forever I suppose entropy is everywhere in the universe but it keeps me uh, it keeps me employed so um, now I'm installing the upper upper mounts to hold it in place and yeah, it's not all that difficult from here it's like the hard part is over uh, so much of this is preparation I mean I, I could have one of these radiators knocked out when I was uh, working in the shop you know within half an hour um, they're they're not that difficult it, there's not a whole lot of stuff to get out of your way and if you do it in this way the way I'm showing this video it actually you know saves you a lot of time with disconnecting things underneath and such to, to access stuff under there um, even with the automatic transmission um, you just disconnect those lines as I said earlier above the transmission I disconnect them at the transmission just because they're easier to access and then reconnect them when I'm all done now an upper radiator hose since we've already fastened everything down I like those pliers they work pretty good for hose clamps however someday I'd like to get a, a proper set of pliers for those uh, hose clamps they work a lot better they actually have uh, a tool that's like on a long cable 
that's great to put down in areas that are difficult to access and it can uh, compress those clamps so that they can be moved around much easier uh, especially in tight spaces uh, I think I'm going to grab my overflow nope I lied not sure why I went over there I guess to throw that piece of cardboard over to the side I'm um, reconnecting that uh, um, electric electrical wire putting it back in its mount I'm also reconnecting the condenser fan uh, I think I already did the uh, um, I think I already did the electrical connections for the uh, main cooling fan in addition to those other electrical connections that I can't remember what they go to over there I think it might just be like a, a common ground or something I wish I could remember that for you sorry I don't looks like my wires are all connected back up Oh. Okay, I lied. Now I'm gonna... I usually do that before I reconnect the upper radiator hose, so it's not in the way. I guess uh, either I forgot or... I don't know, I had, must have had some other reason for, for doing it this way. But it looks like I'm restoring the electrical connections on the main cooling fan now. And also hooking those, that there were some uh, plastic clips that held the uh, harness to the shroud for that fan. And now the overflow. Maybe I got the overflow, I just didn't put it in there. Uh, it's, much, it's definitely easier to get to those electrical uh, things without the uh, overflow in the way. And that was simple enough to hook up. Grabbing the spill free funnel. Gonna install it in the radiator and bleed this cooling system out extremely important to bleed the cooling system I've got a video on it you know what I'll put a link in the description anytime you service a cooling system you've got to bleed the air out if you don't you could have all kinds of problems idle problems heat problems overheat problems you know you name it you gotta get the air out so we will uh, close this one out and uh, fill this radiator up I got a cut here just because you know I didn't want you to see me dump two things of coolant in there and that is a 50-50 mix by the way so it's not 100% coolant it's 50-50 mix I know it's not the blue stuff but it already had green in it from when I did the timing belt so we're good alright I'll uh, I'll catch you later well alright then all that's left now is to bleed out that cooling system. 10, 15 minutes there, it's down the road, it's happy again. Uh, normally what you'll see in bad radiators on Hondas or, or radiators of this type that have the plastic tanks that are crimped onto an aluminum core is that that seal between those tanks and that aluminum core will leak, particularly at the top of the radiator, that's where the hot water comes in. And as a result, that seal goes away and it starts to leak from there. I've had people ask me, can I reseal that? I haven't found a successful way to do it. Maybe you can, but as far as stop leak, I've done videos about how I feel about stop leak. And as, as far as like redoing that seal, I don't know. I don't know. A radiator shop might be able to do it for you. I, and you could guarantee a result with that. But for me, swap it out with a new unit and it's good to go. Now, there are two radiators that are commonly found on Hondas or Integras of this type and that is uh, one that's branded by Showa and the other is branded by Denso and I believe that's the issue here this one had a Showa radiator in it anytime you have a Showa radiator in a Honda beware as far as finding your parts particularly in the aftermarket because Showas were a little bit different Denso's were way more common in Hondas but they did use those Showa units in some of them and you do run into trouble from time to time which is why I had to take a break in the middle of this video because I didn't have the correct radiator I couldn't fasten up that uh, cooling fan to the to the radiator because I just didn't have the mounting for it so we found one that would work everything went together and you saw in real time how long it actually took to do that other than me swapping around the fans which I wanted to make sure that worked before I got to this point that's my story and I'm sticking to it so if you want to add another five minutes onto this as far as practical time now a lot of people used to say when I worked as a flat rate technician that I was fast I always resented that because I never started out that way. 
what I did was, is I started out making sure I got everything done. And then I found like maybe little shortcuts here and there, but also I got more comfortable with my tools and my hands and, and also the product line. And once you do something 10, 15, 20, you know, 100 times, it, it kind of becomes almost like muscle memory. So you just sort of do it, you get it done. As far as me being fast goes, I never liked that. I always felt more comfortable with saying, okay, I'm efficient because Fast sort of says you're cutting corners. Well, me, the corners that I cut were corners that I could cut or I found more efficient ways of doing things. I'm not saying I'm the do all end all, the fastest tech in the world, that kind of thing. I merely did this video for two reasons. One, I didn't want to find, you know, I didn't want to sit there and find every single camera angle like I normally do. Number two, I wanted to see if I still had it and my ability to do something like a radiator job like this in a flat rate situation. But as you saw, hit a wall with a parts problem. That's not uncommon. And also, I, you know, I just wanted to do something different. And I, I've done so many of these radiator replacement videos, it really didn't seem to make sense to do yet another one in the same fashion that I did. So, something different for you is what I wanted. I hope you got that, and I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, where if you have automotive questions, type in a couple of keywords into the search function at the top of the page. I'll let you in on a little secret. Sending me email is probably not gonna work out. This is the fastest way to get answers over there at thecarguy.com. Type in a couple of keywords to the search function and it'll come through our database and you just very well may get an answer. If you don't find an answer there, feel free to sign up for a form. It is absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email. Email. If you don't see it, check your spam folder, bulk folder, what have you. Uh, you're gonna need to click that activation link in order to complete your registration so that you can post your question over to the service and repair section over at the forum. Lots of friendly people over there, including myself, that go and try to help you with your automotive issues. You can connect with me socially on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I hope you had fun with this one. I know I did. It was a lot faster to shoot.